I have been wanting to review the Matilda Goad House and Garden series for a while now. Surprisingly, I have not really tapped into the House and Garden YouTube channel, I guess. I've only really been watching Architectural Digest. I guess all of these magazines are going in like more of a video direction, so it's no surprise I'm a little bit behind. But I've been meaning to watch specifically the Matilda Goad series on House and Garden because A, if you watch my channel or if you follow me on Instagram, I feel like I talk about Matilda Goad quite a bit because I really, really love her style. So I thought today we would take a look at, she has five episodes up on House and Garden, but we're specifically gonna watch the videos of just like her house and how she put it together. And I can already tell just by the covers of these videos, the thumbnail, that I'm really going to like her home. Um, so I'm super excited to watch these and watch them together. So here we go of watching Matilda Goad featured on the House and Garden YouTube channel. It was a Saturday morning, very early, and I kind of looked quite interesting from the outside with quite an overgrown hedge and not manicured at all. So instantly it kind of made me excited. I rang on the doorbell and this guy came to the door in his dressing gown and who was in the middle of having his breakfast and ended up showing me around. And instantly I knew that it was a bit of a gem. This is such a gorgeous home already. And the fact that she found this like old home with bones and she's just designing it herself. This is exactly what I want in my future. An old home that I kind of renovate myself and I'm like s smiling watching this. This is it's gross how like happy interior design makes me, I guess. It was a very small sitting room. It was very dark and the whole house is, in fact was 50 shades of brown. Also, this is just such an enjoyable just video to watch in general. The music. I don't know, everything about it just makes me, like, do I want to move <laughs> to Europe? <laughs> this is just lovely. That's the word to describe it, it's lovely. The sitting room was always at the back of the house and it was something that I really wanted to keep, although it's, I guess, not a traditional thing that most London terrace houses have. I just wanna pause really quickly on this view. Like she just has really unique and lovely style. She has such a good way of incorporating color and like these random modern pieces that kind of exist throughout the space, which helps it feel just more updated because she has a very like old traditional, yeah, like English style. And adding in these like pops of modern, she just does it correctly. I just really, really admire her taste. When we had to knock down this wall, we decided to change the height of the room and create this apex, which is sort of where we spent the most money. Very early on, we had to make the decision for, the, for how this room would look, having to put plans in. And I can't credit it was my decision, it was definitely Tom's, but to have a, a pitched ceiling in our sitting room. Okay, pausing again on this view, if I had to make one suggestion for this space is that maybe getting a rug that isn't the exact same color as the wooden floor. And another little touch that I love are the little pops of red in her, in her potted plants. I need to make a mental note of that for my future place. But yeah, I guess my only critique would be a different rug and maybe adding some like pillows to the yellow couch. I love all of her detail and her attention to color is amazing and everything just feels so clean. And I will say that's one round pillow that I actually like. Not everything might be my taste. I just love how different this is to so many other designers that are, are doing all the same shit. Look at this little, look at this little thing. That lamp, all of her art. That chair with all the patterns, see the mixing patterns? Matilda Goat has always been a super big inspiration for me, so I will say, you know, she, she discovered the mixing patterns in, in my world. That's kind of where I drew inspiration from it, her and Leandra Medine. Just looks so good. 
Everything looks so good. One thing that was originally in this sitting room was a, a working fire, and that was something I really wanted to integrate into this room when we, we made it. And we sort of centralized it on the first part of the room because I imagine this part is gonna kind of have a gathering of seating around it. It's kind of got that slightly beach housey feel, but having this fire means that in the winter it's still very cozy. I do kind of wish she kept the original stone or brick on the fireplace. I do love the mantle and how, yeah, it's like a beachy Hamptons vibe, but there's a fireplace. I just kind of wish she kept the stone. I feel like that could have added some nice interest in this room. Let's take a little break to talk about today's sponsor, Italic. Italic is a marketplace for affordable and high quality essentials. They allow you to shop directly from the same manufacturers as top brands for 50 to 80% less. By removing the brand and retail markups, they're able to deliver premium quality with the lowest possible prices. Italic offers over 500 products, including kitchenware, cashmere, resort quality bedding, activewear, skincare, pet supplies, and even diamond jewelry, all from the best suppliers in the world. And they are constantly launching new products within home and fashion. For a limited time, you can use my link in the description to get a free candle with your first purchase of $50 or more. Again, you can use my link in the description to get a free candle with your first purchase of $50 or more. And make sure to check out italic.com for any future design purchases. And thanks again, Italic, for sponsoring this video. And another thing that we put into our sitting room was a traditional sort of porthole window which allows you to look the whole way into our kitchen which is really a little outside courtyard area such a cute window such a cute little idea she just has such great taste okay we're gonna keep watching i just I'm very, um, like, hyped up. I think with the contrasting woodwork, it, it sort of adds quite a cozy little nook over here. She also does a great job at taking one color and using it in multiple shades throughout her space. Like, this green is on the trim, it's in the doors, it's slightly on the walls. She even painted, like, her little vent a green. She definitely has a color palette that she sticks with, and it's just a really nice way to play with color, in my opinion. The, the paint in this room, a very neutral color called Mizzle from Fire and Bull, which is the sort of Welsh term of rain and drizzle. Mizzle, remember that color. It's a good one. I decided on this green, um, which I think is pronounced calc, calc green from Fire and Bull. And again, I really like the contrast with the walls. If you watched my answering my questions of my subscribers, someone asked me if this green will ever go out of style for kitchens or wherever. And here is a really good example of her using it as a neutral. It just blends in with all of the greenery that comes through the windows. It's just not gonna go out of style. I know it's like a trendy thing, but it's one of those trends that you can do and it's gonna last, in my opinion at least. And Matilda Goat is backing me up, so. I think when choosing print, it can often feel quite a commitment and something that's quite daunting. But I think if you can look at it and pull colors from other parts of the room, it sort of pulls it all together and then you have one common thread. There you go, mixing prints. Like Matilda said, people think it's a really big commitment, but once you start taking those risks in interior design, you would be surprised how much you really love it. Because I definitely was scared to take risks in interiors because I was like, oh, I'm gonna get sick of it. But now that I do it, I just wanna take more and I just want more unique things. It can be sort of all different um, uses and it goes completely flat and completely up and I love it. That's such a great idea. Does she sell that? <laughs> can we buy that anywhere? Cause that's so fun that it can transform into a bed or a bench or a lounge. It would be really good to have those for small spaces. Also, just wanted to point out a little pop of neon through her art in the back. Also, adding in that one really traditional floral pattern as like a staple piece is such a great idea. Because I love a really like English old floral pattern. You just don't want to go too crazy with it. But I think just having one piece that's extremely traditional Love it. I actually got this for £10 initially. And then I had um, this leftover denim from my kitchen bonquette and added this 
braid, which I think has worked quite well. It sort of ties the joining in this room together. Thrifting an old ottoman or chair and then getting it reupholstered is the easiest way to have a unique piece in your space. And I think another little touch that Matilda does that makes her super unique is the, mm, now I'm blinking on the word, the binding, the edging. Ugh, what is that called? Whatever that is. She does that in a lot of her pieces, like on her lamps. She'll like edge it with a different color or like this, it's blue and then it has like the little coral edging. I love that look. And I think that's definitely a Matilda Goad staple. When I moved into the house, I didn't have window dressing as you call it in, I don't think any rooms. I think when you add in blinds with curtains and different textures and different patterns, it just adds that like coziness to the space. And when you see the before, without the curtains, you realize how bare it really is. You really don't know you need curtains until they're put into place and you're like, oh, that really helps. I had found a sofa which was a sort of 1950s style sofa. Look at the pillows on the couch, mixing patterns. <laughs> Don't forget about it. Until I found the sort of perfect sofa for the room, which is now this yellow corduroy sofa. I do really love the yellow corduroy sofa, but for some reason now there's like every single primary color in like a different shade, I guess. So not exactly. So I don't know. It throws me off having all primary colors, but again, it still looks wonderful. The bookshelf in here, we only put in last summer. I worked with my husband and his team. I like the idea of having these sort of almost floating shelves. The dream is always to be able to have a custom bookshelf be built into your home because those large pieces just ugh, can make a space look so good if you can afford getting a custom built bookshelf to your space. How cute is this little lamp? I think she sells that lamp on her website. Go check out her website. She sells a lot of home products that I think you see a little bit throughout her house, but she's got a she's got a good selection. A lot of my art taste has been quite informed by my husband, um, who sort of introduced me to buying art a few years ago and to sort of the joy of finding young artists. How good is her art collection? And also just this wall, this piece of art with those two sconces like nobody is showing pieces like that like those sconces are so beautiful and you would not see that anywhere else on youtube you just wouldn't you just don't see that type of design out there as much that's why i am very excited to start binge watching house and garden this room's changed so much over the last two, three years, and I'm sure it will change a lot and develop in different ways as my family grows. And I think the home is just always evolving. Da, 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 da. Sorry. <laughs> Why is Matilda Goad just such a sweet and genuine person? At least that's what comes across in this, in this series. Now that we've watched episode one, should we watch the rest of the series together? because that is just super inspiring to me. Watching someone who has really unique taste, maybe not everything is my style, but I'm just inspired by so much that she has in her home, and I can take bits and pieces to incorporate in my own space, my own future space. But that's really what I love to see in interior design, people who are just doing something different, and pieces that I can kind of take here and there that fit my own personal taste um i don't know house and garden is now my new favorite youtube channel um if we should watch episode two and three maybe we do like a combo episode of her kitchen and i think there's one other space i want to watch the rest but i'll hold off to see what you all think if we should watch it together this was awesome matilda goad if you're watching you're very inspiring and i love your home i will see you all on sunday go enjoy your day or night or wherever you're watching this from um and yeah, I'll see you at the end of the weekend. Bye.